Greetings, <clears throat> unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. It is 420, it really is, in the morning, 426, 2013. Alright guys, here we go with the news. I found that a lot of the, a lot of the articles I had today tied together, and that I've been seeing over the last few days, every once in a while that occurs, and today was one of them. Um, I wasn't going to do this, but it's such a big story. A, a little bit of the Boston bombing news, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Anytime something this big happens, everybody's got their own coverage of it going on. And there's a lot of burnout. And I know a lot of people just want to tune it out. <clears throat> and at the same time, if you don't cover it, it makes it look like you didn't cover what's going to be one of the biggest news stories, if not the biggest news story of the year. I want to get to two articles, therefore, that I saw on this. And this is from the New York Times. Parents deny son's guilt and accuse U.S. of plot. This stood out to me for one reason, and I haven't seen other commentators go here, so I'm going to. When the terrorists commit heinous acts, they tend to do two things. First of all, uh, they tend to want credit for it. We did this. See how hard we are. They, they, you know, that's, that's their whole point. Uh, what's with Dr. Strangelove? The whole idea of the doomsday machine is fear. Why didn't you tell the world? Yeah. Um, if you don't claim the terror, then it kind of defeats the point of terrorism, does it not? The other thing they like to do is make it known that if you are one of the dissenters, if you are one of the people that are speaking against them, you might get your head chopped off. Therefore, if this family was involved in terroristic activities, these two things stand out to me as a possible red flag. Um, am I saying that they are not tied into terrorism or that their son wasn't? I'm putting the facts out here. I don't really know. I don't think... Uh, very few people can claim to know exactly what happened. I do definitely think that the government had some kind of foreknowledge on this. Uh, based on the denial of what uh, the craft was doing there, which was the security group that was never talked about. And uh, the fact that as soon as the bombs went off, there were people in authority saying that this is just a test. They knew something was going on, and... It, they should have stopped the Boston Marathon, is what they should have done. Um, the parents of the two brothers accused in the bomb attack that killed three people and wounded more than 260 others near the finish line of the Boston Marathon insisted on Thursday that their sons were innocent and had no connections to radical Islamists. In an outpouring of anguish and anger at a news conference, it goes on here in the capital of Dagestan, a Russian Republic in the Caspian Sea. The brother's father, Anzor Sarnev, and mother Zubidat, also made accusations of a conspiracy in which the American authorities killed their son after uh, capturing him alive. That would be tomorrow. Officials in the United States have said that uh, tomorrow in 26 died after being shot during a standoff with the police in Waterton, Massachusetts, and then run over by a vehicle driven by his younger, bro younger brother as he tried to escape. The younger of the brothers, Zakhar Tsarnov, my Russian is rusty, was captured and has been charged with using a weapon of mass destruction. He is recovering at a Boston hospital and may face the death penalty if convicted. Now listen to this. Despite the evidence, after two days of questioning, Mrs. Snarva said that she could not accept that her sons were guilty. No, I don't, and I won't, she said never. During an emotional question and answer session that lasted nearly an hour, the parents addressed many of the questions that investigators of the American public have been asking in the anxious days after the bombing. Now this is to be noted, too. 
You got Dan Badandi on the Infowars.com who questions authorities about things that they don't want to address, and they immediately shut him up. They basically sent the Gestapo after him. Um, here are these guilty. Remember, the mother was a terrorist, answering every question that is given to them for an hour. That that says a lot, people. It says a lot. Their, ex their answers were a mixture of denials and conspiracy accusations, and they seemed exhausted, exhausted through their grief. They expressed concern about Zoklar, <coughs> Zoklar, but did not offer any condolences to the victims of Boston. Uh, you know what? That's either a sign of an extremely callous and cold person, or that's a person that didn't think to apologize because nobody in her family did anything wrong. This is a, a very frightening story. At times she sobbed, raised her voice, and pounded the table for emphasis. She was considering giving up her American citizenship. <clears throat> Some people would say good riddance. Uh, let's see how this plays out before we condemn her. Again, I'm not saying that nobody was involved in terrorism here. I'm explaining some things that you haven't heard other places, and then that's what my comment line's for. In one dramatic moment, <clears throat> she said the FBI agents who went to the family's home in Massachusetts to question Tamarlin about his religious views had asked her if she worried that he might commit an act of terrorism. She said, actually, they told me, don't you think that Tamarlin is being a little bit, you know, like, extreme about religion, she said. Do you think that he would think about something, you know, kind of, and she broke off and trembled over her words, or probably that was their meaning, she said, terroristic terrorism or whatever, aggression. Did you see any aggression in him? She quoted the agents as saying, and I said, no, I did not, she said. She also said that in the days after the bombing, she saw what she described as video footage <clears throat> on the internet that showed a man that said he was to Marlin being put into a car naked, apparently stripped of clothes to check for explosives. The next day, she said she saw the gruesome images of her corpse. Now listen to this. Killed, truly killed, she said, describing the images. I want to scream. I had to scream to the whole world. What did you do? You, what, did you, what have you done with my son? He was alive. Why did you need to kill him? Why not send him to Guantanamo or whatever? Why did they kill him? Why did they have to kill him? They got him alive. He was in their hands. She wants him to go to Guantanamo instead of being killed. Uh, and this is about the uh, not being allowed to see him in prison. Yes, I would prefer not to live in America. Well, yeah, everybody thinks she's a terrorist. Like, why did I ever go there? Why, she said, breaking into tears and sobs. I thought that America was going to be, like, protect our kids. It was going to be safe for any reason. But it happened the opposite. My kids, America took my kids from me. Only America. I am sure that my kids were not involved in anything. And then the very interesting thing at the very end of this. Um, she expressed some of her greatest anger when one questioner said Zakhar had Z Zokar had told officers that the brothers were motivated by an extreme interpretation of Islam. She said that his lawyers had assured her that he could not speak or write. Where does this information come from? She shouted. Either they got the guilty person, which is good, or they killed the older brother to hide something here. And it'll be mighty convenient if the other brother now conveniently dies or takes a turn for the worse. There are things that do not add up in these people, and I'm not one of those anti-American idiots. If they're guilty, I hope they hang by the highest tree. I might even make the rope for you. But this is looking fishy. Last thing about this. For more on this, make sure you check out the other work that Court has been doing, Anthony Court, on the Media Speaks. Falsely identified Boston bomber found dead in River. Now, I'm just going to go to Paul Joseph Watson. I want to go... You can read the articles. I'm going to take you right to these facts that are at the end. These are facts. These are not theories. Tamarlin Tasnev attended a workshop sponsored by the CIA-linked Jamestown Foundation. 
Tamara Lintasnev was on both the CIA and FBI watch lists, in addition to drawing the attention of Russian investigators who attempted to alert the FBI in 2001. And it's very likely that we knew exactly why the Russians were warning us. We wanted to keep track of the idiots that we fund over there, and that might have been what got us into this as well. Tamarlan Tasnev was already right, in both places. Uh, former FBI employees, excuse me, Sybil Edmonds, believes that the two alleged bombers could have been recruited by the FBI. The mother of the alleged bombers claims the men were framed by the authorities and that the video of the naked man being arrested on the night of the suspects were captured, which authorities claim was an unrelated individual who was later released, was in fact Tamerlan Tasnev. The video shows an uninjured man being led to a squad car, whereas police claim Tasnaver was badly injured when he was captured and later died at the hospital. But she doesn't know her own son? The alleged bomber's aunt, Marit Tasnaver, also claims that the man being arrested in the video was Tamlin, so now the aunt doesn't know her nephew either and that police ran over Tasnave with an SUV and then pumped bullets into him. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder how this woman sat through that interview all that hour, no matter what they asked, no matter how many painful questions. Yeah, maybe she got emotional. She answered them. Asked Dan Badandi if, uh, if he got the same treatment. Guys, do me a favor, check out the Charity Connection, and Danae, I'm Mobley Christ, and I am pronouncing it wrong, that's why I'm telling you to go to the Charity Connection. A very nice lady who has cancer, and she has helped many, many, many people through the Charity Connection. She is now sick herself, so make sure you go, look into what we're doing. I'm going to be doing a DJ-a-thon for her, very likely, more than likely. All right, last three things I want to get to, and the one thing, really, they all tie together. I noticed as I've been reading that these were all falling in line, and I want to get to them. This is from Security Week. Israel Airport Security allowed to read tourists' email. I'll tell you how to get around this, too. Jerusalem Israeli security officials at Ben Gurion Airport were legally allowed to demand access to tourists' email accounts and deny them entry if they refuse. The country's top legal officials said on Wednesday, and basically they're saying they only do this under extreme circumstances. However, the Attorney General's office also noted that while a tourist may refuse such a search, it will be made clear to him that his refusal will be taken into consideration along with other relevant factors in deciding whether to allow him into Israel. Papers, please, in Israel. Now look, I understand they've seen a lot of terrorism, and I, I'm no friend of Sharia law. However, you can get around this real easy, people. And I've said it a hundred times. It goes back to, I don't have the article up here, uh, the, uh, but I'll, I'm sure I'll end up getting to it. It's called, uh, your, the, the New Big Brother is Your Boss. The, it's absolutely, yeah, yeah, Big Brother has a new face and it's your boss. It's in Forbes. Uh, go look that up, too. They're saying that they can get into your email account or whatever. And what you do is you create multiple Facebooks and set one to private, and then, you, of course, you have your public. If you're going to give them your information, which I would never do, um, do not give your Facebook information to your boss there. That's great. And, and you don't even know what security he has. But that's what you do, people. And then when an uh, Israeli person asks for your email, you either tell him to go to hell, or you give him an email account that is almost never used. Just enough correspondence to get you into the country. All right. Um, this is from PrisonPlanet.com. California bill would nullify NDAA, protect citizens from indefinite detention. Actually, it's New American. I found it on Prison Planet. That's my fault. This is great. A bill protecting the fundamental due process and habeas corpus rights of Californians is working its way through the state assembly. And again, if you live in California, after Fukushima, you are shortening your life. On April 9th, the Assembly's Public Safety Committee unanimously approved the measure by a vote of 6-0. to zero. The bill, AB 351, is sponsored by Assemblyman Tim Donnelly, Republican 33rd District, and is specifically guarantees the right of citizens of California to be free 
from any federal law that would authorize their indefinite detention in violation of habeas corpus, including the National Defense and Authorization Act. It was Ron Paul that said that the states were going to fight back. And you know what? He's right. And there you go, right there. California is saying, no, you won't do this to us. We're not going to allow you to do this to us. The NDAA gives the executive branch under not only President Obama, but also every future president, unprecedented power to detain U.S. citizens without due process. This runs counter to the very principles that make America great and violates our nation's commitment to the rule of law. Well said, Assemblyman Donnelly. Last thing I want to get to. And this is from EFF.org. CISPA goes to the floor for a vote. Privacy amendments blocked. This is very bad. Um, yesterday, the U.S. House prepared for the debate on the privacy evading cybersecurity bill called CISPA, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. The Rules Committee hearing was the last stop before the bill is voted on by a full house. In the hearing, Representative Mike Rogers was questioned about the core problems in the bill, like the broad immunity and new corporate spying powers. <clears throat> in response, he characterized users who opposed CISPA as 14-year-olds tweeting in the basement. So if you care about being able to actually hold on to freedoms and keep the internet open and free and not worry about bureaucrats and our bureaucrats and our um, the Hollywood bigwigs, then somehow you're a 14-year-old in the basement. I'm going to read you this real quick. Uh, Rogers makes the case for why representatives should vote no. Listen to what this don't says. Another good candidate for the dunce cap of the month award. Uh, Representative Rogers is adamant that no sensitive personal information or email content will be collected under the bill and then sent to the federal court or federal government. Excuse me. Under questioning from Representative Rogers, he said again, again, zeros and one hundreds of millions of times a second in patterns. It has nothing to do with content. Nothing. First of all, this article says, of course, it's zeros and ones. That's how information is passed in the digital environment, whether it's content or not. And that is true. I have a degree in this. If Rogers is going to propose fundamentally changing privacy on the internet, he ought to know that the contents of email are transferred with zeros and ones in patterns. And it is the patterns that they will see and therefore be reading your emails, among other things. Second, if Rogers really meant this, listen to this. If this sly Rogers really meant this, there is an easy solution. Exclude the content of communications from the bill. Voila! Companies would not be able to transfer the content of anyone's email under the bill, whether in the form of zeros and ones or by carrier pigeon. Nope, they don't want that. A privacy amendments aren't allowed to proceed for a full house vote. There you go. The way to stop CISPA is by getting a hold of your representative, and it says to do so. Um, there are many ways to do that. I mean, you can look up who your representative is just by uh, look, looking up your, you know, Canton, Ohio representative. Uh, the best way to do it, too, is to go to the article here. It's on, um, again, CISPA goes to the floor vote for vote privacy amendments blocked, and you will be able to link on to representatives to contact to stop this horrible idea. Thank you, friends, for listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. Go to my Facebook. Go, go, go. My band has a video for War On For Your Mind, which is written for InfoWars. It's edited by Kyle Phillips, and it's this close to being done. We are going to make the deadline. My last correct views is also in the InfoWars Paul Revere contest, and there is a movie, the entire, my, another movie, and it's better than Bilderberg. Yes, it's better than my own film. I am a part of it, and I'm a part of people that were doing great and wonderful things not shooting a movie with a phone like I had to do at the time. Look at the movie. It's called Becoming Paul Revere. You are going to be so unbelievably excited. Go to my Facebook. Go to my YouTube channel. Please donate to the show if you can, because without your donations, who knows how long this can possibly keep going. Sending one dunce cap could be $50. So help me. Please donate to the show. The correct views at Hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless.